Welcome to the Swimming From Home talk show. I'm here with Maggie Steffens. Um, can you give us a little a little intro about who you are as an athlete? Yeah, um, Maggie Steffens. I'm 26 years old. I'm on the USA Women's Water Polo team and I've been part of this team since about 2009. Um, I was a gold medalist at the 2012 and 2016 games and currently still training or trying to at least for the Tokyo games. Um, went to Stanford University from Northern California and very passionate about this sport and the Olympic movement and um, yeah, so here today. Yeah, cool. So, uh, so do you live in Palo Alto? Um, currently I live in Long Beach, California in Southern California. Um, this is where we train full time. So a year before the Olympics, we all moved down here and are centrally located so that we can train every day except Sunday together, um, six and a half to seven hours a day. Um, and also so we can just be around each other and create a great, you know, team environment in general. Yeah, definitely. So. So what has the, um, what has the past week been like for you and how has that affected your daily training? Yeah, um, it's definitely been interesting. And I think as most athletes would agree with this, and I think definitely training at the Olympic level, you are constantly preparing for the unknown and constantly preparing mentally with sports psych and mindfulness, physically with your training, um, emotionally even just having team meetings and talking about what could happen um especially for example what could happen at the olympics what could go wrong so that no matter the situation you're ready to handle it the best you can yeah. and yeah. so we've done that and we're currently doing that but that's for a water polo game or maybe for something revolved around the olympics or the village um and so this is a very new territory for us but trying to still apply you know, those values we would use to handle adverse situations in a water polo game and still use those towards this situation. Um, so for us, it's about sticking together, not physically, because we are definitely practicing social distancing as a team um, and, and doing our best to keep this community safe and healthy. Um, but how can we still try to train and keep a positive outlook um, and still dream our Olympic dream while being restricted of certain, you know, practice schedules or being able to be with one another. Um, so that's been definitely a mental battle here and there, but just trying to problem solve and stay positive um, and do what we can to, you know, stay healthy, follow all the rules and abide by the laws that are kind of set for each county in each area, uh, mm -hmm. but still try to, you know, be the best team we can be and, and train to the best of our ability that we can do in a healthy and safe manner. Yeah, definitely. So I guess, you know, you mentioned training six to seven hours a day on a normal day. What can you take me through a normal day of training for you so we can kind of compare and contrast, you know, what you're doing now compared to right. what you would normally be doing? Right. Um, so our team trains um, from 7 to 10.30 in the morning and then again from 1.30 to 4.30 in the afternoon. So from about 7 to 8.30, we're in the weight room lifting and uh, doing strength training. And then from 8.30 to 10.30, we're in, in the water doing swimming, conditioning, fundamentals. Mm -hmm. um, and then between 10.30 and 1.30 is usually recover, um, you know, lunch, obviously, um, and usually a lot of treatment and physical therapy. Um, then at 1.30, we're back in the pool for three hours, and that includes a lot of strategy and actual playing of the game. Um, and then 4.30, same thing, recovery, treatment, nutrition, usually in bed pretty early. Yeah. <laughs> follow, we follow the light. Um, and, yeah, so that's a, that's a daily schedule for us. It's definitely intense. Um, there's also video meetings and that, of course, in sports meetings, just talking about our team, um, and kind of what we want to look like at the end of the day and how to get there. Um, so that's a daily schedule, which is definitely different than what we're doing currently. Yeah. So. Which is? Yeah. So I think for us, we're really living out this situation day by day. 
as I'm sure most people are doing. Um, and so what I'm telling you right now could easily be next to nothing in what we're doing tomorrow. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, you know, a law might come out about our county or our region, and that means we can't do anything. Or, you know, yeah. something may come up with our team and, you know, that has to adapt. So we're definitely living these out day by day. Um, so this isn't a strict schedule in any sense, but, um, right now what we've done is we're still able to use our pool as of now. Um, but it has to be kind of strict protocol. Um, so when we're at home, we're at home, we're not as everybody else in the world is doing, you know, we're, we're practicing social distancing, um, you know, pretty much quarantining ourselves otherwise. Um, and, you know, washing your hands, stay healthy, everything the world has been saying. And then in terms of the pool, um, we've split our team up so that we're only in small groups. So basically five people um, at a time and practice is, you know, maybe three hours at most. And if we use anything, we're cleaning it. We're not um, interacting. We're keeping that small group. Um, and before practice, we have to do like a screening and check our temperature, et cetera. Um, and then pretty much go home. <laughs> so it's, as of now, we've been able to do that only we've done it once. Um, so this isn't like a schedule that is happening every day, but, um, we're trying to, you know, I think it's really important to be selfless in this time. It's as much as this is our, it's not just our work. This is our life. This is our dream. And I, I hope that we're still able to fulfill that. Um, but this is a time for our world to be selfless and be thinking of others. And so I think that's what our team is trying to do is be, you know, just be aware of that. And how can we be healthy and safe for our community, for our team, for our teammates, families, for this country, um, and, you know, still try to work out and be a team as much as possible at the same time. So it's definitely um, a balance there for sure. Yeah. Yeah. So can you tell us a little bit about the workouts you have been doing from home? Um, it seems like you've been getting pretty creative. Yeah. Um, so pretty much right when this came out, when, you know, practices for club teams and high schools started shutting down and weren't able to practice, um, I got a ton of emails and direct messages from club coaches and from parents and from kids just asking for help. You know, it's, I think this is a problem that we've seen in the water polo community in the sense of when you don't have access to a pool, it's really difficult to train. Um, same with swimming. Right. And so with basketball, soccer, volleyball, running more or less, you can grab your ball or lack thereof and just run outside or go to a local basketball court or find a grassy field and play. Whereas with swimming and water polo, you have to find a pool. There has to be a lifeguard. You have to have access to it. For yeah, water yeah. polo, you usually need another person to be able to pass with. Um, you need a cage to shoot on. And so um, when <sighs> that's been a problem that has been facing our sport for a long time. And it, it definitely stunts the growth because it just makes it hard for people to do on their own time. Um, so Tony Azevedo, a five-time Olympian on the men's water polo team and myself co-founded six, eight sports trying to solve that problem. Um, and that's more based, that company is based more on data analytics, but in order to help improve, um, you know, youth sports, especially water polo, we decided to create, you know, some water polo videos just showcasing fundamentals. Mm -hmm. uh, and so some people had heard about that. And so when all of this happened, they asked us to try to help them come up with workouts they can do at home. And literally the second I read a few of those, I just asked my boyfriend to get the camera and I grabbed a water polo ball and just started doing workouts that, um, and exercises that I remember doing as a kid, or I still do now things to develop my wrists, things to develop my ball handling skills, core leg work. Um, and Tony Azevedo started doing the same and 
we put it out there for hopefully the water polo world to use. They're all on our six, eight sports app and we post workouts every day on Instagram just to hopefully get kids you know, active and still positive at home. And, you know, for me, it was kind of fun. I like tapped into that younger self when I used to do workouts at home all the time to help develop my skills. Um, and now I'm able to do it. I've made a little workout station in my living room um, with my water pole ball, my weights, my bands, uh, my mat. And so I've been doing the workouts as well. Um, so it's been kind of fun and we'll kind of see what happens with it. But um, for us, we just wanted to help provide something so that kids who aren't able to work out right now can still practice their water polo skills and hopefully in a fun way um, and just improve and, and still have that positive outlook that hopefully we can as our team is trying to do, um, can instill that in, in the community as well. Yeah, definitely. I mean, yeah, I know as a swimmer, you know, obviously use a water polo player. It was always hard when you didn't have access to a pool um, to yeah. to not only work out from home, but to find the motivation to work out from home. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's like whether – the Olympics are so uncertain at this point, no one can say one way or the other, but do you, have you found, you know, especially through that process, your, um, your motivations maybe changing a little or, or what, what keeps you motivated to, you know, yeah. workouts every day and get through those workouts every day? Right. Um, I mean, I think the motivation stays how it was, you know, mm -hmm. I still want to be an Olympian. I want to be a great teammate to this wonderful group of women that I'm a part of. And, um, you know, I want to improve every day. That's something that I constantly am striving to do. And so even just by those three things, that means going for a simple run or, you know, giving myself a challenge or a new ball skill I can develop, just trying to see those as small things as well. It doesn't have to be a six and a half hour, seven hour workout that we normally do. It can maybe be a smaller challenge that I do here at home. Um, but my motivation is still the same, you know, still have the Olympic dream, still want to be a great teammate for, you know, this group of women. And I want to improve every day and um, enjoy it at the same time. And that's not maybe as easy to do if you're alone um, or if you're not able to go into a pool, um, which I'm sure we're going to see very soon here. Um, but I think just remembering that and setting small goals and realizing that you can still have the same motivation, um, but maybe it's carried out in a different way. And maybe that's in your living room, or if you're lucky enough, you live by the beach like I do and go hit up the sand and get a little beach workout in. And, um, just remember that you're not alone in this. And that's why I love being a part of a team. No offense. That's why I can't do swimming. I, I love being a part of, you know, this group of women that we have. And that's my motivation really is, um, you know, make them proud as well and be the best I can be for them. And also for, you know, we're a part of Team USA. This is bigger than us. So, yeah. Yeah. You hit on, you hit on goals there. And um, something I've been asking everyone I've been talking to like this is, you know, with, with, um, with elite athletes and or athletes in general, you know, your goals are usually like something way out in the future and you're kind of working towards that. How has, you know, how has this kind of changed goal setting for you? Maybe not changed, you know, the far off goals. You said you still want to be an Olympian, but you know, it's like the daily goals, um, giving yourself small goals. How has that process changed throughout the last week for you? Yeah. Um, I, like I said, it's day by day. Um, you know, our schedule is constantly changing day by day. And so I think that means maybe your goals for myself are changing day by day. So, you know, if I'm able to get in the water for me, you know, maybe it's as it was before is, okay, I want to crush the swim set. I want to, you know, be really efficient on my shooting. I want to make good passes. I want to, um, do good on my drive defense, stuff like that, like little goals that I can do in a water polo scenario. Um, and, you know, that'll probably change. For example, like right now we can't do any contact or maybe we can't go to the pool. Um, and so maybe that means can I 
develop my wrist more so that I can have a more creative shot when I return. So <laughs> maybe the goals are a bit more focused on, you know, smaller skill sets and fitness um, versus a specific, you know, action I would do in the water because we're not in the water for six and a half hours, you know, a day or whatnot. So, yeah. yeah. What so I guess just generally, um, maybe uh, uh, coming off of the sports, um, what what is the vibe in Long Beach right now? You know, are are things shutting down? Have you been out much? Have you been to the grocery stores? Yeah, um, I think the grocery stores has been the most odd experience. Um, I haven't been recently, but um, I think over the weekend we went and kind of just got some food. I like to cook. I love cooking at home, so that was fine with me um, in terms of just eating in as much as possible. I kind of love that because I get to cook a lot. Um, But it was weird. I think that was the weirdest part to seeing shelves empty. And, um, you know, I went in there and I ended up talking to a lot of people and that usually never happens. Um, You know, usually you're kind of like heads down and you're doing your thing. And um, in a positive outlook, it was kind of fun and interesting to see how much the community is coming together more, just being a bit more open, being more patient. You know, usually I feel like people are in line and like, hurry up. Why is it taking so long? But instead everybody was really patient. Um, and even like communicating with each other just casually. And I thought that was really cool. And, you know, in a, in all this chaos, and of course this is an awful situation, but that was a really cool thing to see, um, and witness. Um, but yeah, I think just seeing the shelves empty, that was so odd. Um, but a lot of restaurants and bars um, have shut down. I think it's the, the law is um, only to go food or take away. Um, so yeah, a lot, lot less cars, a lot less people out, um, stuff like that. But it seems like people are still staying pretty active. I live by the beach. And so that's an easy way to keep social distancing, but still stay active. Yeah, definitely. Um, what have you cooked anything noteworthy yet? Or do you have favorite things you like to cook? Oh, um, so the other day I made a sweet potato chili and that was super yummy. Um, and it lasted us a while cause I made a ton. Yeah. So that was great. Um, an eggplant bolognese type dish. Mm-hmm. Like it, in Italy, it's called Aya Um, so I made that and that, act, that lasted us a while, which both of those are plant-based, but I, I don't have a plant-based diet, um, but I love veggies, um, love cooking salmon. So I've put some salmon in the freezer, um, so I can be ready to cook that just in case, um, love cooking fish. I love eating fish. Yeah. Um, a good mushroom risotto with shrimp. That's my plan for either tonight or tomorrow night. So yeah, that sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's good. Um, how do you, so how are you, you know, you're obviously at home a lot more now. How are you spending that downtime where you're not training? Yeah. Um, I'm still doing things I would do. So still getting my recovery in whether that's, you know, self care with flushing out the legs or, um, you know, shoulder rehab, stuff like that. I'm getting the rest I need. So really focusing on trying to get good night's sleep, um, hydrating all of those things that you need to do to stay healthy anyway. But as an athlete, you constantly are always focusing on. So still keeping those as a, a main part of my day. And then, um, also doing at home workouts and, you know, we're used to doing double plus the amount that we're doing now. So still trying to get that time in, I guess. And then, um, you know, fun stuff like puzzling, (laughs) and board games and maybe other things that I haven't been able to do in the past. Um, but also for example, like I talked about six, eight sports constantly trying to come up with different workouts for kids to do at home and different exercises that can help their game. Um, and so that's been kind of a fun, creative way to spend my time. (laughs) And then just, I live with my boyfriend, so spending quality time, you know, he's working from home. And so, you know, that's another gift. Unfortunately, I don't live near my family. Um, they all live kind of all over. And so, um, that's been nice to have somebody 
to go through this with as well because I don't live with my teammates. A lot of my teammates live together, and so they have each other during this time, um, which I'm always jealous about. I'm like, what are you guys doing over at your house? <laughs> what puzzle are you on? Maybe we'll swap <laughs> soon. Uh, you know, so just getting creative and, and having fun with it. Yeah. Uh, 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 the name's oh, eight sports. Huh? Why is it called six eight sports? So it's called six eight sports because um, I wear number six as a Team USA player, and Tony Azevedo wore number eight as a Team USA player. Um, and we didn't choose those numbers. Okay. Um, we actually, basically, we were the youngest on the team when we joined, and so for us, those <laughs> numbers meant that we earned it, and. We were very proud to take whatever number we could to be on that team, um, Team USA. And yeah. so that's kind of our motto to kids is earn your number is our 6-8 sports motto. And to us, that means every day is an opportunity to improve and follow a dream, follow a goal and go for it. Um, so you can earn your number every day. And it's not called 6-8 water polo because we believe that applies to all different sports. And we hope to kind of take you know, our data platform to other sports, whether it's swimming um, or, you know, lacrosse or maybe some smaller sports as well um, out there. So, yeah. yeah. What's a, so what, tell me a little bit about, more about, about 6-8 sports. What data are you guys collecting? Yeah. So something that um, is a little crazy is in the water polo community. Um, here's a very simple example. Um, I'll, use, I'll use my partner, Tony. He retired after five Olympics, okay. um, one silver medal, and he or myself or anybody could not tell you how many games he played, um, couldn't tell you how many gold medals he's won. Maybe you could look on like a Wikipedia and hope for the best, mm -hmm. um, how many goals he scored, you know, anything along that caliber, nothing. And we thought... That is crazy to think that probably one of the most well-known players to ever play the game, we don't know any of his data. And so we thought, can we take that to the youth level and start applying that at a younger age um, so that as you kind of go through this sport, you're able to um, kind of, let's just call it, collect your own personal data um, and be able to look at it, see different trends, and be able to grow and improve from that. Um, and that applies to a lot of different aspects. And so we have created our own app, which you can do kind of on your own, um, you know, own agenda and create your own page and be able to collect that data yourself. But then we have our own kind of game desk platform where we're basically able to collect statistics on an official level. Um, and those go to a certain athlete. And so that'll be super cool, hopefully, as we move forward, is that as kids get closer and closer, maybe to college recruiting, um, they'll have all of that information. USA Water Polo will have all of those statistics as well um, and be able to use that to help grow this sport and, you know, see, you know, how kids can improve and what they need to improve on. Um, and so with that data, we thought, why not help them develop and improve? And so we've created a lot of videos um, half over water, half underwater of different skills and fundamentals they can use to better those statistics and better their own personal trends. Um, and so, yeah, it's been a really fun journey and, and we're hoping to be able to apply that to other sports as well, but there's no data in our sport. It's crazy. You know, you look at swimming and right away you could say, I look at, I go to a swim meet or, a, you know, a pool and on the wall there's all the best times that I've ever been at that pool. Mm -hmm. There's nothing like that for water polo. Uh, yeah. And so we're trying to help create that. We've even created a six, eight challenge, which is a series of seven different challenges. Mm -hmm. uh, and we have kids go through that and it's basically the first ever measurable in water polo. So now one club could do it and another club in another country could do it the usa women's water polo team could do it and you can look at our app um and see you know the top scores the top times and so finally like swimming has like track has like a lot of sports have um we've created the six eight challenge which is the first measurable for water polo so 
it's kind of this unique um, system where you can track data, look at it and analyze it, and then also improve based on, you know, different skill sets that we've been able to provide. So it's been really fun. Yeah. And right now we've, um, you know, put out a lot of home videos for dry land. And mm -hmm. hopefully, hopefully some kids are able to use it and, you know, work out at home. I feel, yeah. Yeah, I feel for them, I feel <laughs> for everyone, really. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, being relegated to to home workouts can be, I think, a nice novelty. But, you know, when it's when you have to do it, it's a little different, I think. But so, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Maggie, any uh, any closing thoughts you have? Um, no, I think that's it. Like I said, we're, we're day by day and that's how I'm focusing on it as well. Um, and I just hope everyone is healthy and safe, um, and still able to kind of live their lives in their own way at home. Um, and yeah, I hope everything is able to work out, but obviously this is a big deal. So I need to, need to respect this process for sure. Yeah. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for your time. Well, thank you.